Northern Region Tamale Tamale is the capital town of the Northern Region and the third largest city in Ghana. It is the fastest growing city in West Africa with the majority of the people being Muslims. Due to its central location, Tamale serves as a hub for all commercial and administrative activities in the Northern Region. It also doubles as a political, economic and financial capital of the Northern Region. In terms of population, it has over 950,124 inhabitants living in the city. One of the cosmopolitan cities in Ghana is Tamale. The media is very vibrant and plays a key role in informing, educating and entertaining their audience. The city is also strong culturally and supports women in entrepreneurship. In Tamale, we were able to map out 10 organizations, dominant being radio stations, that were six of them, two TVs and one blogger and then two women enterprises. Um, Tamale had the very cosmopolitan feel from the three other northern regions that we visited. We found out that there was more economic activities in terms of women doing something. And then the cultural aspect was also very, very um, evident. In Tamale, one thing that really influences the economic activities in the region is the fact that there is a chief that is solely dedicated to commercial activities and he is the Dakbima. And we got to know that um, because of the fact that he he's the Dakbima means um, chief of markets. So automatically anybody coming into the region to do business or anything significant happens to visit the Dakbima's palace. And this, this influence has uh, an impact on, on the kind of businesses that was being done in, in the region. We got to know from, from some of the media personnel that we spoke to that um, brand promotion and visibility was key in, in the region. So what, what businesses were doing was that they would engage popular um, personalities in the media to, to, to promote their businesses for them. So you find out that there were a lot of skits, short videos that um, was being done by radio personalities or television personalities to, to promote certain businesses and, and, and brands, which, which was a very interesting aspect that we saw. And on the part of women, we realized that women were very active in, in the entrepreneurial space. Um, though, just like the other regions, women were engaged in uh, agricultural activities or uh, agribusiness, like buying and selling and stuff like that. Women were also into more or less um, operating restaurants and food food joints. We we had a lot of we we got to know that a lot of women were into agro processing of share butter granite paste and other other um, household essentials. Another peculiar thing that we came across in Tamale that later ran through the other regions was the fact that there were advertising agencies that were mainly from the south, which is the capital Accra, um, who were into business promotion, adverts, and stuff like that. So these agencies were the organizations that engage um, the radio stations when it comes to, to, to adverts. So we got to know that uh, business was not something that people really took their time to research and then um, get into, but they did it based on trends, which was something that was happening in the other regions. The city of Tamale is vibrant and entrepreneurial at heart. The youth are coming up with many small business ideas that are virtually run online. Fine tuning their products quality standards will go a long way to help make their businesses sustainable.
but a lot of NGOs that are helping to develop human capital over there. However, there's very low patronage from women. Even when the product is free, or even when their training is free, and a lot of other perks have been offered from free lunch and all that, women still do not come in their numbers as is expected of them. So as to how that can be changed, it's a real challenge. It's a real challenge since there are other factors that has to be solved from having permissions from their parents or even the women themselves believing that what they are coming to learn, they can really apply it. Some women feel the roles they are being trained isn't really their thing. They are used to cooking and cleaning and they don't see any future beyond that. In Tamale, we visited two second cycle institutions and about three NGOs that are working to help improve the lives of people over there. And the same problem was running through where women engagement was quite low, even though it has improved dramatically over the years. And it has to, it has to do with the mindset of the people, the mindset of the women, how confident they are, and if they believe that what they are learning can really help to improve their lives. I believe this can be resolved if we are able to present to them successful women who are homegrown from Tamale and can share their experiences with them and can share confidence and let them know that if I can make it, then you too can make it. Tamale, with one of the fastest growing economics in the northern sector of Ghana, has great entrepreneurial opportunities resulting from indigents running businesses in all sectors. The region holds a large number of institutional head offices for the northern sector of Ghana. This gives the local entrepreneurs a greater chance of access to finance and other financial supports. So Tamale is uh, the capital of the northern region. It's, it's the fast growing region in the suburb region of the country. It has a lot of traditional businesses going on there, which is boosting the finances of the region. It's also a highly populated region or a fast growing population region. This is bringing about some traditional businesses or they producing their own things to be able to support themselves in order not to <clears throat> exceed their budget, which is in turn giving them a high rate of finances. There are a lot of financial institutions there and actually the region or Tamale who is the town that holds most of the head offices of some of the financial institutions in the northern sector of Ghana. They hold most of their head of offices for the financial institutions. In Tamale, we have lots of financial institutions and investors willing to support startups, willing to invest in them, especially when they are producing local stuff, when they're producing things that is going to be of beneficial, high benefit, high benefit to the region, things like share butter, things like millets and the likes which in turn bring returns to the region during our engagement in tamale we were able to speak to five banks and then four microfinances and savings and loans we spoke to them and then we realized that the managers there or the staff of these financial institutions are willing to support and help all these startups and local businesses help them to structure their businesses, help them to give, give them networking sessions. They're also giving them free advisory services. They are giving them monitoring. They go and inspect the businesses to make sure that they are on track. In areas in the region where they have low literacy rates, where they are not able to invest into technical stuff there, they give them the trainings, they give them the support in every aspect, be it general literacy or financial literacy. And then they give them insight if you like, for instance, they decide to venture into this particular kind of business. Probably maybe they want to go into mining, they want to go into petty trading or transport. They give them insights into that particular industry to be able to make sure they know what they are going in for, the do's and don'ts, the all circumstances related to those kind of businesses. In the long run, they have a smooth business flow. Before they decide to support a business, they make sure that they have all the requirements 
needed from the startup that is they having guarantees they having security either in form of a landed property or lien lien is where you have the you put money down for money so they hold up one of parts of the loan you're coming in for so let's say maybe you're coming in for a hundred percent but they'll hold like a one third of it in your account and then they give you out so when you're able to refund your loan they give you your money back so that is in form of yen or a landed property you're supposed to have and then make sure that you have a continuity plan for your business so that in, in case anything happens in case you pass on or something happens your business shouldn't stop at where you end it's continuous so in this with this they are sure that they're not going to have bad debts or they're not going to run into bad debts they're not going to have the problem of people not being able to pay back loans taking and then they end up running away into other towns and then they also the, the problem or one problem that they face is location how to with um, location of people because i can create a business or someone creates a business at this location they don't have maybe the right location or maybe the right address of it they decide to move their business to another place now locating them from one point to the other point is a problem so with that even if we there's a default in payments how to get them from the to their new business place is quite difficult it's one challenge they face as a region and then the literacy rates in general but they try as much as possible to leverage the literacy rates by training them to be able to get more entrepreneurial programs or more startups in the region tamale possesses one of the fastest growing economies we are much impressed with the startup culture and the size of popular businesses around. We interacted with over 20 companies, including tech startups and farm businesses. The city of Tamale was pretty interesting with its large agriculture nature. And we found out that there's a lot of petty trading as well as the popular businesses going on, especially in the heart of the city. And we also found out that the most cultivated produce there is were admits that too, you find most of the indigents engaging in two or more activities. For example, they can have a store in the heart of town, but when they go back home, they own like a farmland in their own house or background. So that's one key thing we also found out about the city of Temale. In regards to the key challenges faced in Temale, we realized that access to finance was a problem as well as the literacy level of some of the indigents. So in regards to businesses, um, we find out that a minority of them were on social media. That constitutes about 43% of the businesses we interacted with, as well as 34% um, with websites. Tamale is one of the fastest growing cities across the West African sub-region. The city is highly concentrated in traditional businesses. Creation of more opportunities will expose the local entrepreneurs to other ecosystems. Tamale is one of the fastest growing cities across West Africa with an increasing populated region which has a highly concentrated with traditional businesses taking place within the region. Against this background, I realized that the lot of organizations based on a secondary data that were listed to be running or forming supports to businesses and startups. By operation on site, we realized that most of them were just project-based supports that are what folded up due to the end of the project. So they, they were no longer in operation. Some also have relocated or changed um, offices so we're able to get in touch with them. But we realized that it's more of indigenous businesses in the, but there are lots of um, startups coming up that need support. But I'll say that organizations like Hopin uh, Hub is, is doing their best to train um, businesses or startups to scale up but still need the financial support within the value chain to scale up so we spoke with um, three enterprises including comfort we um, the one formalized business organization 
we also spoke with Action Aid within the social enterprise. Then uh, we had a few challenges with uh, infrastructure provider like the telcos, since where they are situated is more of the branch and don't have much decision making to give out access to data. So we're unable to get the feed from them. The, one of the things that I encountered or the team also encountered is we get access to the organizations per course upon reaching the sites. The individual representative organization don't have much data to give us based on our questionnaire. So it impedes the or impedes or defeats the purpose of our meeting because they they are more um, privacy conscious or data privacy conscious in giving us the information. So they said that oh my boss is not there, he'll come this day. So we're looking to capture all those data in our continuous data to have a, a good representation of who is doing what in Tamale and other regions. The Tamale ecosystem can be described as the ecosystem that stands out among the northern ecosystems in Ghana. It is the fastest growing city in West Africa and has all the government support organizations to support the growth of businesses. The ecosystem has been embarked on for the construction of a technology park at Savelugu to promote and encourage the growth of technical ventures in the ecosystem. Of the 11 engage regional engagements we had, the northern region, which was one of them, the ecosystem visited there was the Tamale Metro ecosystem, that's the Tamale ecosystem. And with the Tamale ecosystem, some items that stood out were the fact that the Tamale Metropolitan Assembly, which was the lead policy organization, had an investment profile which was not found in the earlier three regions that we went to upper east upper west and northern upper east upper west and the northeast region interesting to add up was the fact that the assembly also adopted a public private partnership model in order to provide financing for being able to cover the gap that they have in terms of entrepreneur infrastructure and so they outsource some entrepreneurial space such as construction of markets to entrepreneurs who would be able to fund that to build, operate, and then transfer back to the assembly over a period of time, which was interesting because it then helped the, the ecosystem to thrive more and the needs of various entrepreneurs to be met by other entrepreneurs. And that means they get the opportunity to actively involve in the development of the ecosystem. Another component that stood out was the fact that key finance institutions for the public side involved the National Board for Small Scale Industries, MBSSI, the Micro Small Loan Center, that's Maslow, and the assembly itself, Tamale Metropolitan Assembly. And this was really impressive. Yeah. Also, it was discovered that entrepreneurs in the Tamale ecosystem are the people who always like to blow their trumpets at the very early stages when their businesses have been grown. So they start businesses, they run the business over a short period of time, they begin to make profits. And instead of plowing it back and growing their businesses, they begin to diversify into other areas when they have not been able to solidify their market for the various businesses that they are already running. And this then leads to most of them surviving a maximum of three years. So this doesn't really help the ecosystem to grow. In terms of business registration, the Registrar General's Department is found in the Tamale Metro which then serves as a, an advantage to entrepreneurs who are found within this space because others that it serves that's within the northern zone would have to travel from regions like the northeast region, the upper east region, the savannah region, and also the upper west region in order to access these services. And this, I think, is an enabler for the ecosystem to thrive more. <laughs>